Three years ago, I made a video discussing my top 10 favorite Pokemon, and since Pokemon Scarlet and Violet just finished up, I think it's time to update that video. If you didn't know, I'm a huge Pokemon fan, and it was very hard deciding which Pokemon I liked over some others. But nonetheless, here are my top 10 favorite Pokemon. The Unova region has a super underrated Pokedex, and my favorite Generation 5 Pokemon is Mianxiao. I've always thought Mianxiao was cool, but I never got to use it much until it was added back in the Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Teal Mask DLC, where I trained it up and used it for online battling against friends, and I was genuinely surprised by its strength. It has high speed and attacking stats, and with its ability Regenerator healing Mianxiao's health each time it switches out of battle, allowed me to run a Life Orb set on it, and it was great! Mianxiao's battle prowess isn't the only thing I like about it though. Mianxiao also has a really nice color scheme with the light beige and lavender, and I like how it's a fighting type without being some masculine human. And don't think Mianxiao being placed lower than my last video is a sign that I don't like it much anymore. It's just, I like some other Pokemon more now. You might be surprised to see Scizor here, because it was not in my original video, and it's also not a new Pokemon. And you'll probably be even more surprised to hear that it wasn't for me using it in battle either. You're probably aware of the Swords Dance Technician Boosted Bullet Punch set, but I've never used Scizor competitively. So, why do I like Scizor so much now? Well, it's actually a lot more simple than that. I just think it's really cool. Scyther was already a decently designed Pokemon, but giving it an evolution, with an oddly same base that total, made it so much cooler. Scizor looks so sleek with a clean red coating and massive pincers that make it look so badass. Buck Steel is also a massive upgrade to Buck Flying, and while I didn't at first, I think Mega Scizor also looks really cool, with even bigger metal pincers and an almost robotic look to it. While my random appreciation for this metal bug is fairly recent, I can't help but notice how well designed Scizor is, and I hope to one day use it. If you didn't know, the ghost type is my favorite type. I love the concept of vengeful spirits overtaking creatures, and most ghost type Pokemon are so well designed. While not on this list, Marshadow and Golurk were on my last list, and some other ghost type Pokemon I like, like Dragapult, Aegislash, and Giratina, barely missed this list. But let's talk about number 8, Mimikyu. I couldn't care less about Pikachu, but a ghost Pokemon wanting to be loved so it dresses up as Pikachu is right up my alley. I love Mimikyu's design. It's practically a ragdoll, looking drab and worn out, but still oddly cute in a way. Plus, it's good in battle. Prior to Gen 8, its signature ability Disguise allowed it to take one free hit per battle, and while nerfed in Gen 8, now taking one eighth of its health no matter what move it hit by, it's still a really good ability. Plus, Ghost Fairy is great typing. It's why Pokemon like Fluttermane are dominating the competitive scene right now. Combine strong Pokemon with great design, and you land a spot in my top 10. I feel like I was one of the only people who chose Pokemon Scarlet over Violet for two reasons. The first is that Professor Sada is very hot, and the second was Coridon. Coridon is my favorite box art legendary without question. I don't have strong feelings for most box art legendaries because you don't get to see them until the tail end of the game, and once you do catch them, it's unlikely you're going to use them. But allowing players to have Coridon since practically the beginning of the game was a great decision in my opinion. It allowed you to really connect with your legendary, and using it in the final battle against Professor Sada made the battle so much more engaging. Coridon has so much personality, and any cutscene with him is so entertaining. Plus, its design is great. The head and tail feathers look very majestic, and I also like its more... Um... Not robotic design? I mean, I like Coridon, but you know... It looks like a penis. <laughs> When the Paldean Pokedex was revealed, I was wondering what the Big 1000 Pokemon was going to be. Was it going to be some ferocious legendary, or some high-end mythical Pokemon, or the cheese string mascot made of coins? Despite its striking similarity to the Applejack's mascot, Golden Go is one of my favorite new Pokemon in Scarlet and Violet. He's a golden man made of coins with the signature move Make It Rain, and has a golden surfboard. That is awesome! Plus, Steel Ghost is great typing, making Golden Go one of my favorite Pokemon to use in battle. I've already mentioned how the Ghost type is my favorite type, but I also love Ghost type Pokemon that aren't all creepy and dark and just fun, silly, and goofy like Golden Go. Or as I like to call it, Jiho Denjo. Every generation, I tend to pick the Grass type starter because across the board they have really solid designs. Venusaur is a cool poisonous frog dinosaur, Sceptile is a badass lizard with leaf blades on his arms, Torterra is a giant turtle with an ecosystem on his back, and, foreshadowing, Decidueye is an awesome hooded archer owl. But, when Sprigatito was revealed, I didn't have high hopes for his evolution. First of all, it was a cat starter, which we got only two generations ago with Litten, but I was super nervous for what it would evolve into. 
I was hoping for some cool Sabertooth Tiger or maybe an elegant Grassberry Floral Feline, but when Masquerita was revealed, I was strangely okay with it? Yeah, despite it being everything I didn't want, I actually really liked its design and design premise. I think the mask is cool, its magician inspiration is fun, but its design isn't what made me like it so much. It's its insane competitive ability. First of all, let's look at its stats. Very high attack and speed, allowing it to outspeed almost any opponent and hit really hard while doing so. On top of that, its ability is Protean. While nerfed in Gen 9, Protean allows the user to get stabbed for any move used on the first turn when sent in, and this ability is crazy. Couple that with the insanely wide move pool this thing gets, and this thing is a monster. But that's not all. Miascarita's signature move is Flower Trick, a base 70 power move, 100% accurate move that always lands a critical hit. So if you were thinking to boost your physical defense to tank hits from this thing, think again, because Flower Trick just negates that. Throw on a Focus Sash to prevent it from dying in one hit, and you have a monster in competitive battling. So, while I think Miascarita is cool, me using it in battle is what allowed it to become one of my favorite Pokemon, and my favorite Generation 9 Pokemon. <laughs> Out of every Pokemon on my original list, Gliscor has gone up the most. I've always liked Gliscor because it's always had such a good design and it was a much needed evolution to Gligon. But at the time of that list, I've never actually used it in battle. And I wish I did because this thing is just so much fun to use. I won't talk too much about battle capability because I just did with Miascarita extensively, but the Poison Heal Toxic Orb combination is great to use. But even if Gliscor was terrible in battle, I feel like I would still like it due to its awesome design, with its Darkwing-esque wings, and just like Scizor, the badass claws. I wish Ashes in the anime had more screen time, because it could have potentially been one of Ashes' best Pokemon. But I guess a spot on my top 10 list is a good consolation prize. <laughs> Probably the biggest shock to any longtime watchers of my channel, because for the longest time, Midday like Knock was my favorite Pokemon, and practically the mascot of this channel. So it must be really surprising to any old watchers on my channel to see that Lycanroc isn't only not in the number one spot, but it's no longer the midday form, but the dusk form. While I've never liked midnight Lycanroc, I've always had some kind of appreciation for the dusk form. It's kind of a combination between the midday and midnight forms, taking the best qualities of both and creates the perfect Lycanroc. So why only number three? Well, there's two reasons. First of all, evolving a rock rub into Dusk Lycanroc is tedious because you have to evolve it at 5am in Ultra Sun or the extremely slim 6 minute window in Paldea games. And it has to have its hidden ability. But also, these next two Pokemon have grown on me more and more ever since their introduction and have overtaken Lycanroc. I mean, come on. Decidueye was number 2 on my original list and my appreciation for it has only grown stronger since then. Rowlet was my first ever starter so I obviously have sentimental value to Decidueye. Plus, he's a hooded archer owl that shoots spirit-filled arrows, and that's just so badass. And as an added bonus, Decidueye has a great shiny, deep blues and black, making Decidueye look even better. Decidueye also has a Hisuian form, and while I think it's cool, I'll always have an appreciation for the original, and it will always be one of my favorite Pokemon. I've debated putting it at number one when scripting the entire list, but there's a Pokemon I think that's even better. Hisuian Zoroark is the best designed Pokemon Game Freak has ever made, hands down. I usually do not like super edgy designs like Mega Charizard X or Raboot, but for some reason, Hisuian Zoroark is an exception to that. First of all, Hisuian Zorua is very cute and its unique typing of normal ghost makes me like it even more. But once it evolves, it becomes so dark, with the ghostly wisps becoming even more pronounced, and its color scheme in both regular and shiny makes it look so cool. It's weird, because I never actually played Pokemon Legends Arceus. I own the game, but I never got around to completing it, therefore never using a Hisuian Zorak on a playthrough team. But honestly, that doesn't matter, because while fairly recent, my appreciation for this amazingly designed Pokemon with a great typing and shiny has landed itself as my favorite Pokemon. Thank you all so much for your support recently. I genuinely appreciate it. My goal for 2024 is to hit 15,000 subscribers, and because of you guys, I think it might be possible. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.